Hello, Felix from Nintendo Life here, and today we're here to review Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 The Sith Lords. Now, this review was originally written by Mitch Vogel, but was converted into video by me. After Bioware's Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic wowed audiences with its in-depth storytelling and RPG mechanics in 2003, publisher LucasArts decided that a sequel would have to be made as soon as possible. Much akin to how Majora's Mask came out barely a year after Ocarina of Time changed the game, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 was fired out as soon as developer Obsidian Entertainment could possibly make it and it released a little less than a year and a half after its predecessor. Considering that an entirely new development team of just 7 people took over this new entry while still meeting the narrow deadline, it's truly a miracle that the final product turned out as good as it did. As a standalone that was evidently rushed to market, KOTOR 2 may overall feel weaker than its predecessor, but it also does a fantastic job of maintaining the high standards previously set in storytelling and gameplay. Before we get into the weeds, we think it bears mentioning that this re-release on modern platforms brings with it the opportunity to finally play KOTOR 2 was originally envisioned, before the demands of the deadline necessitated that the dev team cut content. A free post-launch patch, the Sith Lord Restored Content DLC, is coming which will bring this missing content back by reworking the entire final act of the game with a whole new level, hundreds of bug fixes, adjusted cutscenes, new enemy encounters and expanded dialogue with important characters. Those of you who've played this in the past on PC may already be familiar with the content, which comes courtesy as a fan developed mod, but suffice to say this is a new exciting chapter for a game viewed as many to not living up to its full potential in its original form. If you're after the complete KOTOR 2 package, this re-release will offer that, if not at launch. KOTOR 2 picks up a few years after the events of its predecessor, which took place roughly 4,000 years before the events of the films in the pre-Disney canon. You're playing the role as a Jedi named The Exile, who has been cast out by the Jedi Council due to his actions in the Mandalorian Wars. The story picks up with The Exile suffering from a convenient case of amnesia and being haunted down by the Sith. And you're soon joined by a roguish, Han Solo-esque pilot named Atten Rand and a mysterious, force-sensitive woman named Kreia. With the Sith hot on your trail, you lead your small, growing crew across the galaxy in search of the last few remaining Jedi Masters, either to kill them for the decision to exile you or to ask them for help in fighting back against the Sith. The story here hits all the expected thematic beats for Star Wars Adventure and features some nicely obscured plot twists. But the real draw of the experience is how the Exile's journey is determined by the moral decisions you make throughout the plot. Wherever you adhere to the Jedi way or allow yourself to be corrupted by the hatred of the dark side is up to you, and it can lead to some fascinating outcomes depending on who you end up aligning with. Dialogue with any character usually gives you a range of responses from comically mean to overly compassionate which will gradually push you towards either the light or dark side as you progress. Gameplay follows the same basic blueprint of its predecessor, wherein you travel from planet to planet to explore dungeon-like environments rife with treasures, chests, enemies and simple puzzles to solve. We especially appreciated the puzzles here, as it is another area where the player decisions have a large role. For example, an early sequence necessitated that we find three partial clips of a deceased character's voice to open a locked door. Going through the motions of searching the environment for computers with these clips and conveniently unwitting NPCs to help us in this process netted us a lot of experience. But we alternatively could have simply shut the locked computer with a blast bolt to get the door open. As you're scourging environments for characters and MacGuffins needed to progress further, you're sure to come across all manner of aliens and droids who will do their best to cut your journey short. Combat plays out using a system that feels a bit like a primitive version of the combat in the Xenoblade Chronicles games, mixing together live action and turn-based elements in a dynamic fashion. Each character in your party will auto battle with basic attacks while the player is responsible for manually positioning characters and firing off various force powers and special attacks in their arsenals. Importantly, every attack and ability is governed by an old-school D20 dice roll system that controls parameters like accuracy and damage. So even if it looks like a flashy live-action battle is taking place, the characters and enemies are really just taking turns behind the scenes. 
Though the battles can feel a little stiff sometimes, we enjoy the deliberate and strategic pace they bring. Tracking the action and firing off needed buffs, items and attacks at just the right time can be a surprisingly fraught experience, ensuring that you're anxiously following every attack in the deadly dance of a fight. And for those of you who feel that there's not quite enough time to make those decisions, there's an optional feature you can enable in the menu to automatically pause the action at certain intervals to turn combat into a more pure turn-based battle system. With the experience you get from fights and successful completions of puzzles, you can then level up characters in an hands-on stat tree that gives you plenty of control over character growth. If you just want to get a move on or feel intimidated by all the options, you can choose the recommended option and let the game do it for you. But for those who want to roll up their sleeves, you can choose to distribute stat points manually into skills like intelligence, will, and charisma, each of which will be rolled every time you try to attack, dodge, lie to an NPC, slice a computer, or do virtually anything. It's very easy then to build your character wrong and make this game needlessly difficult, but we enjoyed how many directions you could take your character and how that can fundamentally change the way you approach this adventure. Between this expansive character growth system and the focus on player decisions in the story, there's a lot of ways to retread this game on subsequent playthroughs. Visually, KOTOR 2 looks about as good as it can. The simplistic environments, boxy characters, and stilted animations betray this release's age, but features like mostly 60 frames per second performance, high resolution textures, and occasional use of dynamic lighting help to prevent the aging graphics in the best light possible. KOTOR 2 is far from a showcase of the marvels of modern hardware then, but you eventually adjust to it well enough. As for the soundtrack, we were impressed how seamlessly classic Star Wars tunes were mixed in with new tracks that maintain the same spirit. More importantly, this soundtrack was recorded with a live orchestra in Seattle, and the increase in quality compared to the standard MIDI music is noticeable, especially if you wear headphones. We hope that the patch bringing the DLC mentioned above will come with some important bug fixes too, because KOTOR 2 suddenly feels a little rough around the edges with its performance. For example, we had one amusing sequence where a party member evidently decided he was done with the adventure and refused to move from where he stood no matter how much we tried to coax him. After we left him there and later triggered a cutscene that he was in, we watched as our character talked to thin air while the camera would awkwardly cut back to the party member sprinting through hallways as he tried to catch up with us while still saying his lines. When he finally reached us after running across half a starship, the game crashed and we lost nearly half an hour of progress. The adjustments made to the Switch release of the original game post-launch suggest this could improve in the future, so fingers crossed. On top of the funny but annoying gaffes like this, we noted instances where the music would cut out and be replaced by awful buzzing. The only solution for this was to close out the game and start the application over. Additionally, we ran into areas where the framerate would notably drop into the low 20s, which feels absurd for a game that launched on the original Xbox. It's quite clear that the port of KOTOR 2 could use a little more spit and polish. It feels like the game just gets tired the longer you leave it in rest mode and then starts slowly coming apart as it seems. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 does a solid job of building on the foundation of its predecessor, capitalizing on engaging combat, player-driven storytelling, and deep character-building systems to make for a satisfying and very playable RPG. The downside of this Switch port is that it's rather buggy in its launch state, and the game is often content to simply repeat the ideas that made its predecessor successful without adding to them in any notable way. We've got hopes that the post-launch improvements will come along the upcoming and free Sith Lord Restored Content DLC, a very welcome addition that will really complete this package. Despite its faults, we'd still give KOTOR 2 a strong recommendation, now we'd suggest you play the original game first and then move on to this one if you still want more. We here at Nintendo Life give Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 The Sith Lords a 7 out of 10. And that was the review. Now, I myself also got to play this game a little bit, and I must say I also noticed a couple of bugs. For example, when you turn on the game, the sound clips and is extremely loud. But aside from that, if you like Star Wars and don't mind the dated visuals, you should definitely give this game a try. Stay safe, play some Star Wars games. Felix from Nintendo Life here, out. Oh, what?